Well, shopping at consignment stores and flea markets is a great way to save money and add some interest to your space. Here with some budget-friendly ways to create two very different looks for your table. You might have heard of this woman, designer Sarah Richardson. <laughs> us because you have this great way of mixing the flea market, the consignment, all of these things that are low budget and making it look so luxe and so layered and so Thank beautiful. You. So you've done that here um, in a couple of different ways, but before we even get to the beautiful table settings, I need to know the dirt. Like, give me the tips. How, what are you thinking about and what are you remembering when you shop consignment? Okay, rule number one is it's a treasure hunt. Yes. And this is not, you cannot go out with a list of like, today I'm going to find pink china. Well, you probably would find pink china because that's what a lot of people are getting rid of. You have to be, have an open mind. And it's right. an adventure. It's a scavenger hunt. It's a treasure hunt. It's about you never know what you're going to find. Yes. So go with an open mind. Go with a camera. Um, and just be prepared to have fun. But okay. the other thing is that... I like to go and look at how you can mix and match. So mm -hmm. I love to entertain. I love to have a big crowd. Um, but I also love to mix and match. And so this is sort of like two takes on how you can mix and match a table. Okay. I think if you want to keep talking about like tips for what else to keep in mind. Yes. That in a lot of the consignment shops. So I went to a consignment store. Cut three. I hit three consignment shops to find everything that is on these tables. We actually have B-roll of that. So let's okay. look at the video and you can okay. tell me a little bit about okay. your mind was open you were yep. like I don't know what I'm gonna find look, here for I am. City I'm, Line. Looking. I'm just gonna I'm look looking. this is so this is at around the block okay which is here in Toronto and it's amazing oh that's me finding these dishes right okay. that are on one of these tables which yes. is amazing you just have to think okay how could I possibly mix and match this into my own home so right. you can make a mix and match table of white china with a gold edge like this is what you found and if you if you look at this plate I mean it's a plate but it's got all of these beautiful etched out designs all around the uh, you know around the exterior and where are these originally from so these are from Copenhagen and this is fine bone china and I got a set of six bread and butter plates and six dinner plates for 60 Dollars. That's nothing, right? It's nothing. Like this is. Everybody in my office wants this. Like this gorgeous. is so beautiful. The beautiful thing about going to consignment, though, is that you're getting the plates that no one else has. So these are they're they're an original and they're beautiful. Um, you bought six. Yep. In real life. Are you just trying to get as many as you can possibly get? Are you, like, what's the limit? What's the lowest you would go in terms of plates? Oh, that's such a great question. I would never go lower than six. Like, for me, okay. six actually isn't enough for me because yeah. I'm, not, I'm not entertaining six. I, I'm it's a never going to be six. I'm a 12. To, last weekend, I had 28. So, oh, my gosh. But I like multiple sets because yeah. I'll mix and match. I'll do one of okay. these plates beside one of a different plate. And so more is more. And I've always collected. I, I love Granny China. Yes. And I honestly <laughs> believe that all of this is about to have a big moment when you bring it into your life and you make it work for you. So yeah. it's wedding season. People mm -hmm. are going to start thinking about registering. Do you really want to pay $200 for every place setting? Or in the case of this set over here, mm -hmm. this is an entire set. I only brought a few to show you. This yes. is an entire set of Royal Stafford Westminster made in England. Wow. A full place setting for eight. Two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars for eight. For eight. For eight. Everything. That's incredible. This gorgeous, okay. this gorgeous one with yeah. these. Look at these feathers. I mean, this is for me. This is classic meets contemporary. Yeah. Like, look at this on trend color palette. Mm -hmm. Beautiful frilled edge, two tone. I've jazzed it up with a turquoise linen napkin. Yeah. Full setting for eight plus serving pieces plus cups and saucers and dishes and bowls and all this stuff. $90. Amazing. Oh. Amazing. So the general rule of thumb is get as many as you possibly can. Get the biggest set. But the also, biggest set possible. At consignment shops, there's a starting price. Okay. So the starting price on day one is yeah. up here. Every month, that price drops lower and lower and oh, lower. Oh, that's good to know. Lower. If you're on a budget, yes. you just need to hang around. You need to go back and check often and right. wait until it hits the price that you want to pay for it. Right. Somebody else may get there ahead of you, Yeah. but I love getting the deals. So yes. this set of china had been sitting there for a year. Oh, wow. I've seen it three times. And I finally said, okay, now, now what's my price? Like, yes. this is from Ellen Eve, great, great store in Toronto. And I said, now what's my price? It has been here for so long. I'll take it home 
for $90. For this, right. So right? you tell them. You know what? There's something to be said about the not instant gratification. I grew up with parents that they're never instantly gratified. Right. They're like, they get their eyes on a barbecue and they're going to wait. Right. You know, <laughs> until it comes down to the price they want. And there's something to be said for that. Like, just take your time if you don't have the budget and wait. You don't have to get disposable pieces really quickly. Now, there's something at the, the other side of the plates that you need to be looking at right. when you buy. What are you looking for? So what you should always do is flip the plates over and see where they're made. One thing is always okay. make sure that there's no chips and that the tops are in good shape. Yeah. But look on the back. So this is made by Minton. Yours is from Copenhagen. I don't know the okay. name of the manufacturer. And this one is Royal Stafford. And what you can do is you can easily just get out your phone, hit the Googles, yes. and look up how much you would pay yes. if you could find a replacement of this. If you were buying it new, how much is that going to cost you? In case you're okay. wondering, is this a good deal? Totally. It's your own little antiques roadshow. Plus, don't hesitate to ask the people in the store. Yes. They may be very well informed, and right. they may know. Here's other things that are fun to buy. Okay. A silver tray. Entertaining season. Beautiful. This has been really well loved. I had to polish it myself <laughs> this morning. It was $30. $30! Here's a great example. Look at these. Chunky. These are modern art glass. They're made by a company named Libera. Okay. And so you can Google this. Is that candle holders? It. They're candle holders, but I also think they're just gorgeous sculpture. Like, yeah. They're very like nice. puzzle pieces. Yes. These were $30. Show them the ashtray. Show them the ashtray. Show them the ashtray. That's well, the most beautiful smoke, thing. I, I like <laughs> tabletop. I like coffee tabletop. Oh, it's heavy. So you can find, I am always buying Scandinavian art glass because yeah. whether you use it as uh, something on your dresser to put your accessories in. Yes. Do you put your rings in this? Do you serve a dipping sauce in this? Yeah. I mean, Look at how beautiful these are. It's gorgeous. Okay, really nice. So while you're doing the sort of flea market consignment finds, uh, the old with the new, you've been showing us how to do this on your show, um, Sarah Off the Grid. So you did one season, yes. and it was amazing to watch you hauling all of that stuff to this, like, unplugged destination. <laughs> and you're going to do it again. And you're doing yes. it with your two sweet, your two sweet daughters yep. and your husband, yep. otherwise known as? The Minister of Exteriors. And you are the... <laughs> Uh, I'm the Department of Interior. <laughs> He's the minister, I'm the department. You're the department! <laughs> I love it! So you're doing this thing, um, you, go, you, you go out there, you start from scratch, and yeah. this is off the grid in the truest sense of the word. How challenging is it to um, design these spots that are off the grid? You know, it's actually not. It's the same as designing anything else. So there's a little bit of a hurdle at the outset in terms of, for last season, due to the remoteness of the property. Yes. So that was the challenge. The challenge was really in, in shipping and receiving. It was all about transport and trucking and the driveway. Yes. Um, but this season, it was a whole new adventure. So we bought a Victorian home in a town. Yes. And it was in need of a massive overhaul. And we've done a contemporary addition. So combination of restoring a historic home yeah. and putting on a contemporary addition. And this time, not for us. Not for you, you're not gonna stay there. Not, not for me, no, I have, I have a place. I'm good. You have a place, place. <laughs> you got a house. I, I built my forever home, but the thing yeah. is, you know, I love an adventure and yes. I, love, I love the idea. I mean, I think this, this idea of flea market has been in my DNA since I started. Mm -hmm. This is what I love. I love taking the old and making it new and fresh and exciting. That's nice and it's, it's what we're all about. We're all about sustainability and that's part of what you're doing and making it look really beautiful. So uh, Sarah Off the Grid will air, it airs Sunday nights on HGTV. And uh, thanks for joining us.